Hey everybody, Saint Tone here. Welcome to the long-awaited Sword Mage Crash Course Guide. A lot of you guys requested information on things like statting, arcane arts, DAO, equipment, PvP, and more. So hopefully I managed to cover most of the frequently asked ones. If I missed anything important, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Starting with equipment, the most important items that have to focus on are crit increment, crit, magic defense break, and special skill power. You can get one offensive stat on helmet and chest piece. Pants, gloves, boots, and rings can get two, weapons get three. Try to get a talisman that has crit or crit increment in the early levels. Magic defense break, zeal, and movement speed are other valuable stats to look out for. Win your badge with crit increment, magic defense break rate, or crit if you're lacking, neither demon or break essence situation pending. Exalt or green stats for offensive items should focus on crit increment and crit, or for weapons, any of the triple green exalts like annihilating or perceptive. For defensive items, triple green exalts or ones that focus on physical defense are good. For Soul Grid, I'll be providing a link to the one that I use in the description below. For your stats, focus on intelligence and dexterity. I like to keep decks anywhere between a third to a half of intelligence. Vigor and Spirit are not needed in PvE content until level 75 and higher. The most important PvE DAOs to focus on as a Sword Mage are Nimbus Rain, Elemental Fury, and Sword Salvo in that order. I prefer damage and cost reduction over CDR. For Arcane Arts, I take Resource Generation on Lamb and Bolt. Later on when we get our class ult, we take Dragon to Phoenix Resource Conversion as a core passive. Angel Fire gets all bonus damages, resource generation, magic defense break, and cooldown reduction. Elemental Rhythm, we take all damage boosts and lightning stance and extra magic damage from the buff on the first row. We take all bonus damage passives for Searing Wake while in lightning stance. Later on when you have extra points, you can put points into Celestial Aura's many passive boosts for offense and defense. Early on though, don't. For Star Sword, we take all DPS increasing options. Bosses can't be stunned anyways. Later on, it's good to lower cooldown in tandem with Searing Wake on Star Sword. Celestial Aegis, we only take the early release as a quick aggro wipe if we accidentally pull enemies off our tank. For PvP, we use less intelligence, less dexterity, a lot of vigor, and a little less spirit than vigor. For PvP, Lamb and Bolt takes resource generation but also takes Phoenix conversion if you're someone who enjoys using Ride the Wind and Dark Moon. Angel Fire takes damage, magic defense pen, resource gen, and reduce cooldown. Burn maintenance and second cast no element are late game optional cultivations. Elemental Rhythm takes increased magic defense pen while in fire stance. Of the two, Angel Fire no second cast cost is better than critical element generation on Elemental Rhythm. Searing Wake takes built in magic defense pen and bonus damage under array. You'll have to get used to using Searing Wake before Star Sword Detonation to make the best use of the extra damage. Reduced element cost is optional later on. Lamb and Step goes across the top road to reach reduced cast time on next channel skill. This passive is the driving force behind most impulse techs post 69 that you'll see in this video and others. Stunning Step receives bonus damage and magic defense break after cast to capitalize on the offensive playstyle Sword Mage deserves when chasing and nuking. Celestial Aura consider defensive passives later on to help offset our low physical defense and HP. Star Sword takes all bonus damage across the top row. Resource generation is optional to speed up playstyles that make heavy use of right meter. Frigid Aura can be spec'd later for a Lamb and Step reset for more complicated maneuvers and techs. Celestial Aegis should take at least one point in early release so you don't get caught for using your immunity. Hey, it's okay, it's okay, you're 
Phenomenon. The tide, the grass, the ground. Oh, that was me, I was messing around. I killed a snake, I buried its guts. Sprouted a tree, now he got coconuts. What's the lesson? What is the takeaway? Don't mess with Maui when he's on a breakaway. Those were clips from last week's deathmatch. While the scale of battle is smaller, it follows the same rules that you would use in battlegrounds. Generating resource while simultaneously whittling down opponents with skills like Angel Fire, Lambent Bolt, Lightning Orb, and Cold Shackles will buy you opportunities to quickly kill enemies with your special skills. Lambent Step into Star Sword gives you chances to deal high burst damage as well, without having to rely too much on meter. I know there's some information that I missed, so feel free to ask in the comments or on my video thread on the official forums. Thanks for watching everybody.